People have been asking me, Perry, do you think it will get this bad as some are suggesting or projecting that it will? And for the next few moments, we're going to discuss this and we're, we're basically going to talk about, I think we can see how morally and spiritually and all these other areas that we're concerned about, especially if we are believers, that we see the United States heading toward. Just so many controversial things, so many things that it's even hard to believe that we've gone this far and swung so far into the depth of a mire of just total confusion when people don't know their identity, who they are, what they are. And, uh, you know, the restroom situation won't get into that because that would probably get me booted off of this channel <laughs> or this particular one I'm giving you. But we all know that. But uh, one of the things is this, and that is economically. Now, I want to say something to you. I remember years ago making a joke about Christian television. And I told people, I said, prophetically speaking, if you watch uh, several weeks nonstop of Christian television, I'm speaking of all the networks, you will walk away more confused than you were before you were watching. And we laughed about it, and I explained this. Somebody will come along and preach pre-trib, then somebody else will do mid-trib, and somebody will be post-trib. Somebody will be, will be a millennial. It's four different group, groups of uh, teachings, four different theological um, viewpoints. And so which one is right? Well, the same is true with social media. If you begin to listen to someone, they will say, uh, don't invest in gold and silver. Then someone will say gold and silver will be the only thing left. Somebody will predict it's going to go to $30,000, which that will never happen because it would be a total collapse of everything. Nothing would be, everything would be useless. And so um, you don't know who to believe. You don't know really who to trust. And so this is one of the reasons why I try my best to stick with the facts and stick with what the scripture says. So um, could it get this bad? Now, let me explain to you about my family back in the 1930s. Several people within my family were called into the ministry in the 1930s and 40s. And one of them was uh, my grandfather, John Bava, and the other was R.L. Rexroad, who I call him my great granddad on uh, um, grandma's side of the family, but really he was her step uh, stepfather because my grandma Lucy Bava was Italian. Her father came over here when she was a, a girl, and then he went back to Italy and never returned. And her name was La Priest. So if you are watching me and you're Italian, you are La Priest, we're probably related somewhere through my grandmother, uh, Lucy Beva. But if you, um, uh, uh, R.L. Rexroad was a pioneer minister. He started three churches that still exist in the state of West Virginia. Now, this is a, a book that I had in my possession for a long time. It's a, actually, a, it's a pamphlet, not a book. So I'm going to hold this up and you can see the picture of R.L. Rex Road. Let me see. He is right here. And my, uh, uh, my grandmother is in the middle. And she was, she was just gorgeous. She looked like a, uh, you know, a 1930s Hollywood movie star. And this is a little book, uh, 16 pages. Well, let me say again, a pamphlet that he put together talking about uh, he was in the Secret Service and then he started doing barber work and then he was called into the ministry. And once he got called into the ministry, he traveled a lot during the Great Depression, which was the worst time to try to travel. Uh, he talked about how that there were holes in his shoes and he had to take uh, the rubber inner tube and put in there to prevent water from getting on his socks when he walked. Uh, he talked about the tires on his car having no tread on it whatsoever and just so many terrible things that he was trying to go through, yet he was trying to travel and minister. Now, could it get this bad? I want you to just listen to, and as other pages I could reach to page 15. Now, again, this is a family member who uh, was traveling during the Great Depression. And you hear a lot of people talk about this, and that's why I'm bringing this up, how that America could enter into another Great Depression somewhere down the road. Of course, some people have been predicting this for four or five years, and it's not happened yet. And I believe personally that's just the grace of God on the covenant people who are still here, who have not gone to be with the Lord, and because the Lord has not returned, we are a restraining force on the earth. That's another message. I'm going to quote you now from this. More than one time I've said to my wife, we better give up preaching for a while when her feet would be on the ground, that means barefooted, and our clothes in such a shape so as not to fear fit to appear in public. With tears in her eyes, she would say, Bob, his name was Robert Rexroad or Bob Rexroad, let's try it a while longer. She was always ready to take her place in suffering with me. I remember one time 
uh, when her toes were sticking out of her shoes and I had half sold my shoes with inner tubes. I came to her and said, let's give up preaching for a while. I can barber or teach school and make a good living. She only shook her head and said, no, let's try a little bit, bit longer. So as he could do other jobs, but he was called to preach and win souls. But there was no income whatsoever in winning souls. In fact, there was a belief when my dad was preaching in the 60s to keep the pa pastor poor in poverty and keep him humble before God. There were, there were businessmen sitting on church boards that believed that, you know. They could feed their family a full meal, but the pastor's eating, you know, leftover uh, potatoes that have little sprouts growing out of them. I know, we did that as a kid. As stated, as stated, we've gone hungry even in bitter cold weather. Our hands and feet have been frozen. We've had no place to call home and had to lay our heads on our cushions and get what rest we could. I say, I'm sure I will not be able to stand this much longer, but thank God I expect to see what heaven is. He actually thought at the end of this book, I'm just gonna to have to quit the ministry. My suffering will soon be to an end and then I can go home to uh, dear mom. I have been working for um, and be with, be with uh, oh, the dear man I've been working for, speaking of Christ, and be with him and mother and loved ones who've gone on before. At the time of this writing, November 15, 1934, I'm 273 miles from home, and I've just received a letter from wife telling me that she and the babies are in need. I'm doing all I can. This is only a sketch. If anyone would like to write me, you may do so. I will be glad to answer. Uh, my prayers are that God will bless every reader of this track. Um, uh, and uh, R.L. Rex Road, David, West Virginia. And, and that's part of this testimony. And I know it kind of ends in a negative manner, but he's just sharing with people that if you think you have a hard time, let me just share with you what I'm going through, but I'm still trusting God. And he actually died, and I knew him well. We visited him uh, where he was um, on his deathbed as when I was a little boy, but he died in 1967, the same time about when uh, Jerusalem was recaptured and became the capital of Israel. It's, it's a very interesting story. So the question comes up, will it ever get this bad? And the answer is there's no one that really knows. People speculate. We do know that it will during the Great Tribulation period. That's evident. But what I want to say from reading this track and reading about my, my, grand, my granddad, and we don't have any of these books, and I apologize for that. These are the only copies I have. My Life Story, uh, John Baba, that's another book. But reading these, there's one thing I see, especially with my grandfather, John Baba, was trusting in the Lord. These persecutions that they had, which were severe because of what they believed as far as the scripture, they were very persecuted for what they believed. People threatened them. They threw eggs at them. They did all kinds of horrible things against them because they thought that they were weird in what they believed because they believed in praying for the sick and things of that nature. But the thing I get from these is how the level of trust, how that what they went through caused them to pray more and caused them to trust God at a higher level. So the, I think the question we have to ask ourselves is we say with our mouth or we kind of assent with our mind, well, I trust the Lord, God will take care of it. But in our heart, do we actually believe that God knows us and sees us and he sees the sparrow that falls and watches that sparrow. He knows the number of hairs on our head. And how much do we really put our trust in him? So my encouragement for you today, and I, I know when you hit economic times, it affects ministries such as ours. It, it's, it's affecting it at this point. But we've always put our trust in the Lord and we've never watched him fail us. At some point, we see him come through and we've trusted him till this point and we will continue to trust him till the rapture or the coming of the Lord, whatever you believe in, and uh, uh, or we go home. So I pray for you today that your trust in the Lord will be strengthened and understand that we have people who went before us that are now with him that would come to tell you if they could, you can trust the Lord, he'll take care of it. And God did bless both of these men uh, after the Great Depression in, with the works of their hands. And as I said, R.L. started three churches that still exist to this day, and God kept them and preserved them. It's really amazing. Granddad had the, had, uh, the Rex Road Happy Band, uh, oh no, uh, Country Cousins, and he had the Rex Road Happy Band. We got musicians all over the family here. But give, it a th give this a thumbs up if you enjoy these stories, and uh, subscribe to our channel if you have not. And always remember, if you'll keep watching, uh, they'll usually come at a uh, YouTube advertisement. When that's over, there's always something I want to share with you because our ministry is resource oriented and we'd like to get some resources in your hand and you can help us continue our seven point outreaches around the world. Thank you for your time.
During the 2024 Prophetic Summit, five speakers unlocked unusual prophetic mysteries, presenting striking insights that many attendees had never heard. We received several testimonies from those who attended. One attendee shared, I've studied the Bible my entire life. I binge watch prophecy programs. Before I came to the conference, I thought I'd heard everything. But after listening to these 13 messages and speakers, I realized I haven't even heard half of it and certainly don't know as much as I thought. The 13 2024 Prophetic Summit messages are now available on CD, DVD, USB drive as MP3 audio files, as well as video on demand. Hear Jonathan Kahn as he unveiled the Josiah Manifesto, unlocking more end time mysteries and patterns. Bill Cloud examined the question, where in the world is Palestine? He later taught what the Bible reveals about global warming, it's not what you think. Mark Biltz exposed the designs and plots of the internal war in America. Mark's second message is illustrated with PowerPoint charts, helping identify the true biblical calendar and amazing prophetic parallels. Lance Wall now released a stunning revelation titled, How God Will Soon Shake the Visible and Invisible Kingdoms. Lance's second teaching will teach you about receiving the firstborn anointing that brings about the final fall of Satan's influence and the demise of his kingdom. Billy Crone proved by 12 facts, exposing that aliens are actually demonic manifestations. You certainly don't want to miss this insightful message. Perry Stone's five new messages are 16 Harbingers, Parallels of the Days of Noah and Lot. Perry then explains the mystery of the eighth beast and the death wound that is healed. In his third message, Perry will give you the seven things that must happen before the Antichrist arrives. You will then be enthralled when Perry transports you into the future with the message, the mystery of the new heavens on the new earth. This includes the biblical prophecy of an opening on earth where saints on the new earth can peer into hell. Then Perry's most talked about and stirring message, exposing an early family secret in his Italian family is called the 1915 warning. This message could save your family's life. This truth can transform your relatives and children for eternity. The 13 audio CDs or USB drive are $70. The 13 DVDs are $105 per set, and the video on demand is available for $90. Invest in your future. Be informed of what is coming. Discover God's latest word on the last days. Listen or watch over and over again and glean important spiritual insights. You may order by calling toll free 1-888-21-BREAD. That's 1-888-212-7323 or go online at perrystone.org. You may also send a check or money order and order by using the product codes on the screen. The address is Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee 37320. Order today. We look forward to hearing from you soon. If you enjoyed this YouTube content, there's an important website you should know about, perrystone.org. Perrystone.org is an essential resource for the latest books, audiovisual presentations, and digital products from Perrystone Ministries, resources that cover the same kinds of topics discussed in the program you just watched. Stop in and see all that's available at perrystone.org.